in the first half of 2013, I found myself just crazily busy. And I'd made some unwise choices and commitments and I either was crazily busy or I was going to let people down rather badly. At that moment, you know, halfway through 2013, I decided with the encouragement of my spiritual mentor to plan a sabbatical. Planned it for about 15 months ahead of time, which was the time I needed to unwind myself. But it was an amazing breath of fresh air. In the middle of that time, I spent five days on the island of Iona. Following that sabbatical, I've made it my habit to spend anything from half a day to a whole day, normally half a day, in prayer. Prayer walking, in fact. One of my congregation a couple of months ago asked me, how on earth do you spend a whole day praying? And I, I gave her an answer. She said, oh, I see. Now, I wonder where, how you would respond to that question. Whether you would say, oh, yeah, this is what, what I do. You, you may well do, in which case you probably don't need to watch this video. Alternatively, you may be scratching your head a little bit and thinking, uh, well, I'd have to think very hard about that. Let me get back to you. Uh, perhaps it's something you would struggle with a little bit yourself. Um, I want to say to you that I really strongly recommend that you take half a day a week to pray, think, reflect, be quiet, not feel you have to be productive, meeting people, etc. Being alone with God, if you like. Um, even in management and leadership circles, it's commonly recommended to take half a day a week for a manager or leader just to think. Now, of course, when you're on an island like Iona, the beauty and majesty and power of nature all around you uh, make it terribly, terribly easy to be alone with God, quite frankly. Nevertheless, the pattern that I, I used when I was an owner is the pattern that I've continued to use in a normally half day a week that I now spend um, alone with God and uh, pretty much always mostly walking. And I just want to um, reflect on that pattern because I think it's a, just a, a threefold pattern that may just work for you. Um, the, the first of the three is, is paying attention. When I went to Iona, one of the things I was absolutely determined to do was not set the agenda. I wanted God to do that. I wanted God to grab hold of me, say, I'm here. Now I've got your attention. Here's what I want to say to you. And God did in speak, indeed speak to me quite powerfully. Um, he arrested my attention the very first day. If you really are interested, you can read about this on the blog on the main Habits of the Heart website. You have to go back to 2014 to find it, but uh, there's a lot there. And I carried, continued really through till about the middle of the third day, just in that paying attention mode, just because God was had so much to say when I actually took the time and the trouble to pay attention. It's harder paying attention walking the streets of Birmingham to what God is doing, but it is possible. And God speaks through nature, especially. And God speaks to me through the Psalms, uh, through just reading, listening to the Bible. He speaks to me through silence speaks to me through music. The tree exercise that we ask you to do in third week of the habits and timetable it, it is a little example of this, paying attention for 10 minutes to a tree. And it, if you really pay attention properly, it starts to say something to you, not just about itself, not mainly about itself even, but about your own life. Uh, and this is very much uh, intrinsic to the way the book of Proverbs is constructed and the many images in nature that we find there. So paying attention is the first thing. Paying attention, stop, stop the incessant noise and just decompress. Silence is good too. Once you've spent enough time paying attention, then you can move to reflection. There was a moment on Iona when I was walking down one of the many ravines when, when suddenly a verse shot into my head, it was the verse from Romans 1, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, talking about the gospel. There was no obvious reason why that verse came into my head, but I, I immediately sensed what God was saying. 
I had been running the Habits of the Heart course for quite some years by then, I think uh, maybe six years. And it, it all started out its life in the secular world, in, in, in the world of personal development. And I was wrestling with the thought that maybe I should be moving it into the Christian world. And suddenly this verse spoke to me and it helped me relax about addressing the Habits of the Heart course and taking it to the Christian world. And it reassured me, in fact, that if I did that, it would eventually leak back into the business world again, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, to those who are close to your own faith community first and then to those who are more distant and so I began to reflect a lot on this. I was reading the scriptures, I was writing, journaling a lot. And then finally, I, I came to, to, to the last phase when I was finally ready to ask, to tell God what I wanted. Um, I'd spent a good amount of time just listening and now I, I, I moved into intercession, just telling God what I want change that I want in the world. So, so there's the simple pattern and I still use it. If I've got five days, I take a couple of days over each. Uh, if I've got three hours, I take maybe an hour over each. And that's what I do as I walk. So paying attention, many, many ways to do that. Seeking to just see what God is doing first. Reflection and intercession. There's a little pattern for what you might do uh, when you spend half a day or more alone with God in prayer.